everybody, it's the 3D Printing Professor, and we are live on the live stream today, hoping for people to pop in. Today we are going to be talking about some advanced dual color experiments. Uh, on Twitter, I've seen this uh, 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 3D printer user with a with an Ultimaker 3 doing some amazing things with dual color prints. Uh, Augustin Flowstick. Check this out. He's getting three colors. How is he getting three colors? Real simple. He's got the parts where it prints blue. He's got the parts, well, more of a cyan still. He's got the parts where it prints yellow, and then the parts where they both print together print green. Now, in the past, I've heard of this technique before, and I did not want to try it because what I was told was if you print on top of another thing without moving up the layer, you might jam your nozzle. I have done it in the past accidentally, and it didn't jam, but that didn't trigger a part of my brain that said, huh, maybe this would work, but Augustin here has really nailed it, so I'm going to give it a try. So I've got my 3D printer all fired up and ready to go with a dual color print. Let's start that up. And then while this is going, I am going to be pulling up Blender. So this is what we're going to be printing in Blender. It's, uh, it, I, I used the same blue, yellow, green, and actually I did it somewhat unintentionally because I had forgotten. Sorry, my 3D printer needs some grease. And I need to spend some time greasing it up a little bit and maintaining it. Uh, so yeah, my, uh, my three, hey, Caleb. You're on the stream and happy to have you, man. Let's let's rock it. Good to see you. So, uh, yeah, we're going to pull up the chat window as well while we're working here. The chat window is not coming up. Why is the chat window not coming up? Okay, let's see if I can remove this element and add in uh, window capture, chat window, grab. No, not that one. Nah, yeah, that one. Grab that one. Let's see what happens. Still no? Well, for some reason, I can't bring the, the chat in on the uh, on the live stream. So, guys, I'll just have to pay attention to what you're saying and talk to you. Uh, good to see you, Caleb. Hey, uh, be sure to let me know in the chat if my, if my frames start dropping. I'm trying some new settings, but I'm also working in Blender. So, the reason why this combination, the... the uh, yellow, green, or yellow, cyan, blue. Yeah, well, it's because of you, Caleb. You are the one who, who convinced me to do this. Uh, Caleb just popped in the chat and said, thanks for doing this. And, you know, hey. Mac Vision. Hi, Ireland. Awesome. So what time is it over there in Ireland? It's like, boy, way too early for you to be, or, or late for you to be watching this. But, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, so the reason why, why cyan, yellow, and green... Uh, are the colors that I chose is because this is Christmas and for Christmas we need green and green is a secondary color of pigment in when we were kids uh, oh thank you Caleb when we were kids we were told that yellow and and uh, blue mixed to be green now, that's not exactly it's it's true but the more accurate is that you want to have cyan and yellow uh, and I say more accurate, it's, it's, if you mix all the colors, you get black, if you have cyan, magenta, and yellow, instead of red, you get green and blue. You know what, I'm talking too much, I'm, I'm going to start modeling, so we're going to crack open a new file here, and, uh, hey Aspie, I'm glad you're here. Alright, settings are working so far, but it tends to, it tends to be good for like six minutes, and then it starts chugging like a beast. Let's see, it's 32. Now nah, I want to crank this down to 16. We're going to go low poly on this. All right, so I'm going to start by adding a cylinder to my scene, and I'm going to go into edit mode and move it up one. I've talked about why I do this before, but the idea is that I move all the points. It's 530 in floor, or it's 350 in floor, a little bit later than I intended to, to pop in. So the idea is that now all the points are above the center point, so when I scale it, it stays above that point, which is exactly what I wanted. So we're going to be modeling a Christmas tree. And this this build plate here is the size of the build plate of my mini, but I am not printing on my mini right now because it's done be broke. Uh, instead, I am going to be doing the test print on my uh, uh, replicator. Good old reliable. 
and then uh, we'll see where this goes. Let's see. Norbert! Hey, welcome to the party, Norbert! I'm glad you're here. Uh, Alright, the print is starting, and I'm going to need to monitor this a little bit. I keep on, I keep on turning off Z on my, uh, on my scale up because I feel like I'm trying to tell it to scale into Z, but it's already scaling into Z, so it turns it off. All right, so that's the base of our Christmas tree, and this part is going to be green. So I'm actually gonna, gonna go ahead and throw a green color on this, which doesn't show up unless I switch my view mode to material. There we go, now we got a green Christmas tree. However, this is the part where the two, the two colors are, are coming together. And again, Caleb, you, you are the one who told me to do dual extrusion, and I said fine. I was gonna do uh, another 3D block animal. I had some plans for the 3D block animals that I was doing. But I never, uh, I never got around to them. Um, so generally speaking, for dual extrusion, you have two models that are completely separate. You don't want them to overlap. But I'm trying to do some color mixing here, which is supposedly a bad idea. When I first learned about dual extrusion, I was like, do not cross the streams. Um, because if you do that, it's, it's possible that you'll jam your nozzle. Whoop. Oh well, the yellow did not stick at all. Should I worry about it? it? Seems to be going okay. Maybe if I can just pull that out of the way a little bit. No fear of printing, guys. Except I'm very afraid. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, baby, you and me. All right. We'll see what happens here. So, what was I saying? I was saying, um, can, well, here's the problem with doing a, a dual extrusion 3D block animal, uh, I think. Uh, Tinkercad, I, I would have to play a little bit with Tinkercad with putting two objects in the same space. I know I can do it with Blender real easy. Um, and since we're not trying, you know, since we're trying to get them both overlapping in the same space we need to do it this way so this is the base green and then I'm gonna have some yellow and I'm going to have some some cyan on there and I think what I'm going to do so I'm gonna duplicate this tree and I'm going to call this cyan tree and I'm gonna call this yellow tree and you couldn't tell the difference when I clicked on them we're going to have to pay attention to the names as we work. Uh, for the yellow tree, I'm going to add... Ooh, I'm going to add an Icosphere. It's been a little while since I worked with one of these. And uh, I'm going to crank the subdivision. I say it's been a little while. It's been a little while since I worked with one of these as an Icosphere. Uh, 1-2-3-D Catch... Or 1-2-3-D Fusion is a great program. My, my only gripe with it... Is that it's so new and the one two three D apps have been coming and going so fast um, that I haven't had the time to learn it. That's that's my only complaint is that I haven't had the time to learn it. I need to learn the one two three D apps and I've loaded them up and I'm starting some tutorials on them, but I just I just haven't learned them. I'm beginning to think that using this icosphere was a bad idea, so going to delete this. We're, we'll just delete this. We'll just delete this. And instead we'll add a cylinder with 10 vertices. Uh, why 10 vertices? Because if I grab every other one going around here and scale it down or scale it up. Uh, you know, I'm going to scale it up and all but the Z. You get a nice little star! Come on. Rotate 90 degrees. Uh, scale it back in just a little bit. I like my stars to be stubby. And my setup's a little bit awkward right now. Um, ah, cruddy duddies. I when I scale it back down, I forgot to constrain. But that's okay now. You know what? I'm gonna go with it. I'm gonna go with it. We're gonna put this. Actually, we're gonna. 
you know, I need to, uh, if I, I'm going to get rid of cyan tree, we're going to have only have the yellow tree for now. Uh, just the yellow lemon tree. Get the main 123 modeling software and ignore the app for, you mean 123 Fusion. Um, and, and I agree with you. Uh, I, uh, that's probably exactly what I'm going to do is, is learn the Fusion app. Oops. Uh, I was accidentally grabbing more than I was intending. Uh, yeah, and I'm, I'm going through some tu tutorial for 123 Fusion right now. I want to learn it. Um, I think it's I think it's great. I'm seeing what other people are doing for it. It basically can do everything that I can do in Blender, but it's much easier to do. So um, I like that. And I like to be able to recommend apps to people that can do cool things without a whole lot of effort. I'm going to just really quickly kill the back of this star and then mirror it. How's our print going? Oh, let's, let me get that out of your way. Well, I don't know if it's quite turning up as, as cyan yet, but I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, mirror in the... Oh, okay, there we go. Mirror in the Z. And that way, as I keep working here, if I work on this side... Just do a simple, just do a simple little star. There we go, a simple, simple little star for you. There we go, and that should print standing up like that, okay? There's a little bit of overhang here, so maybe I'll grab this edge, that edge. Oh, I can't do edge select mode in, uh, Blender does indeed have a steep learning curve, but it's actually not too bad once you get it, which I know is a bit like saying, you know, it's that's pretty good artwork there on the fridge for a 12th grader. <laughs> um, yeah, Blender is Blender is tough to get. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna deny, it. but it made a lot of sense when I was first starting out. Because I had already done, um, I had already done one, two, three D Max. Oops, sorry about that. And uh, and all sorts of higher end Maya and things like that. So I I caught on to Blender pretty quickly. Uh, and at the time, it was the only modeling program in town. Um, all the free stuff is no no been burned many times since the 80s and i'm with you on that i i agree with you on that but blender has so far been doing a pretty good job of of not being an absent um you know party it it, it does change over time and that makes you know I, that's why i'm looking for something else uh and that's why i'm looking at one two three d catch and we'll probably I'll, I'll probably be going with that and i'll probably be able to recommend it one day so let's see. Oh wait, I want to switch to material mode. So this is what we got so far. Nice little Christmas tree with a star on top. Let's get some more ornaments on there. Uh, and I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm just going to make these uh, UV spheres um, scale them up by I don't know three. Oops, let me get my mouse pointer where it belongs. Uh, I'm having a hard time working because my uh, my mouse is is having to go under the cable for the camera that you're seeing the other one on. Heather, are you in? Where's Heather? Heather, I didn't see you say hello. It's a step up from Tinkercad, and then Heather said hello. Heather, I'm so happy you're here. Heather is like the the biggest uh, uh, cheerleader of 3D printing online that I have ever met, and there has been so much that that she has done, and, and I'm hopefully going to embarrass you a little bit, Heather. Um, but uh, uh, she she has inspired me to do things like these Tinker Coins. Uh, hey, Heather, here's here's my Tinker Coin. 
that you inspired me to make. And, I, you know, other people had made these maker coins, and I was like, I didn't come up with that idea, so I'm not going to do it. And Heather's like, hey, I got this project where I want to do people's, uh, uh, people's coins. Oh, I forgot to turn on my light in here. How's my... Oh, my camera's looking awful. Hold on, guys. Improvement in quality in three, two, one. Hello. All right. So let's see if I can... Let's see if I can get this lamp over here. Oh, wait. No, no, no. I got better than that. I got a... I got a little one in my pocket, and I will use that instead. So, uh, here's my Tinker Coin, or whatever. And if you put a light behind it, I'm going to watch my camera. You cannot see a darn thing because the light is too bright in the camera. Okay, I go kind of see it there. God, 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 God. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Very difficult to line this up. Anyways, yes, it's a lithophane, and you can see it perfectly. Uh, and without the, it looks terrible. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's, that's kind of cool. And I made two of those because I didn't know which one would be better. Either Simon's face or my face on there. And, uh, I think the consensus is that Simon's face is better. Uh, <laughs> I said, talking away from the camera. All right. Let me see. Let me see if I can remember how to do this. Uh, snap to nearest face. Why is it not? It's so weird. You're supposed to be snapping to that face. You're not. There we go. There we go. Nope. It. Nope. It. Okay. There we go. That one's on there. Uh, closest center. No. Is that a bad idea? Yeah, it seems to be working. It seems to be sticking on there. It's not rotated though. So, uh, rotate 45, maybe 30, maybe just rotate it by hand. Alright, so now I'm trying to position these little eggs on here. I don't know why I went with egg-shaped ornaments, but I did! And then what we're going to do is, um, a line rotation. Ooh, let's see if it works. Oh, it does work, but not as I expected. I like that, though. I like that a lot. Okay. Well, I'm making my own tree for sure, Heather. <laughs> Um, what I'm doing today is I'm playing with dual extrusion. Whoa. Um, so I've seen, I've seen a guy on, on Twitter who combines dual extrusion colors, um, and does what I was told I was not supposed to ever do. And so, yeah, it's going to be a dual extrusion tree. Oh, I see what's happening. I need to turn off the zap. Down, 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 down. That's probably good. All right. So now we got that. Okay, we got that, and then we duplicate it. We got that here. And now I'm just gonna put some ornaments all over this tree. And let's put some on the top here. So these ornaments are all going to be yellow. Let me get my color mode up. Yeah. Well, Heather, we, we love having you in the community. Like I said, you are the biggest, the biggest cheerleader of 3D printing and have inspired me to do things that, you know, I, I'm, I'm kind of stubborn and if I didn't come up with an idea, I don't like to, to pretend, you know, to, to steal other people's ideas. Uh, but you come along and you're like, yeah, make a maker coin. Okay. And I'm, I'm entirely willing to do that for you. <laughs> the Dalek tree. Yes. Defoliate. Very nice. Oh, 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 bad. Turn off, the <laughs> turn off, uh, turn off the lock. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to go a little bit crazy because for the cyan, I'm going to turn this sucker cyan. Um. 
And so my tree's gonna look cyan now. Oh well. I'm going to go to sculpt mode. So warn me if the uh, guys warn me if the um, frame rate drops. Sorry, I just noticed that my camera was off, so I'm going to adjust that. Warn me if the frame rate drops because I'm about to turn on dynamic topology in sculpt mode. And uh, oh, oh, oh! I got to turn off symmetrize. Um, and I'm going to be adding snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow to my tree. Oh, I wish I'd have put more variation in the tree. You know what? I'm going to do it anyways. I'm going to, I'm going to back out of here. Um, go to object mode. Let's delete the cyan tree. Let's, whoa. Oh, I changed the color of the material. No wonder it changed. Huh. Joe, always assign new materials. I'm not very good with materials. Most of what I do in 3D printing is is uh, you know most of what I do is to uh, is for the geometry of things. So I don't normally worry about texturing and things like that. And I I want to I want to get better at that stuff, but I'm not doing it yet. And so no no. Come on. You won't let me go that way, you jerk. New, 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 new. <laughs> you won't let me go that way. All right, let's see if I can do it this way. Oh, I know how to do this. I know how to do this. Okay, hold on for a second. I'll just randomly grab some of these. All right, there we go. And grab that one. Leave those two and grab that one. And up here, I'll randomly grab these two. Um, yeah. Uh, the inability to use GO2 or GO3. Tell me what that means. I do not understand what you are talking about there. Uh, I would agree with you if I had any idea what you meant by that. Is, are those G code codes? Because I haven't got those memorized yet. Uh, what's GO2 and GO3? And now I have to wait while chat catches up uh, with my question. Alright, that worked okay. And then I'm going to grab that right there and crease it. And then I'm going to grab that right there and crease it. Increase it. The Pink Mafia does have very, very persuasive powers. And uh, I don't want to say it's it's because you're a girl, but I think it's because you're a girl. I don't know why. I, I, I should not be like that. I should be like all progressive and whatnot. And I would treat everybody equally. But I have to admit, I am programmed to respond to ladies differently than men. Life. You know, when the guys come in and they're doing cool things, I'm like, stand back. I'm going to do my own cool thing. And when the girls come in and say, hey, can you do this cool thing? I'm like, yeah, sure, you know, of course. And it's not right. And it's not funny. It's a little bit funny. But there it is. Okay, I got it. Now that I've reshaped the tree, I probably shouldn't say that sort of thing. I probably should, like, discreetly just... <laughs> All right, put that there, and 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 that there. But I tend to open my mouth and say stupid things, which is probably why I am looking for work now. <laughs> All right, so uh, arc code, to build an arc instead of segments. Oh, oh, you mean like procedurally generating arcs. Okay, well, no, I can see that. I can see that being a problem that that blender doesn't do that yeah uh, you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna move all of these to their own layer and this layer so that I can select them all together later because I want to redo this tree I mean blender can do 
Blender can do to a certain degree. Uh, it can do arcs and things like that, but not from a mathematical basis. So, um, I can see the complaint. And and Blender isn't very, oops, oops. Blender isn't very mathematically based. Uh, that's the truth. Um, it's very artistically based, and so you have to be, you have to be one part artist to make use of the tools. However. It's got the frickin' Swiss army knife of tools. It's, it's like a minivan. It's good for, for going, you know, commuting, uh, taking the kids to school, and picking up stuff from the hardware store. Like, if you get it, it was the last tool you will ever need. Um, yes, there are things that it can't... Um, oh, I'm sorry, Meester Dam. Meester Dim. I uh, apologize for what I said. Um... I, uh, I, I do tend to open my mouth and offend people, and I apologize if I offended you, and I want you to know that I didn't mean it. I really didn't. Um, let's go on with the... Okay, now I'm going to duplicate this. Oh, turn off the that mode there. Duplicate the tree. Oh, wait, I want to grab all of these... And except for one of them, the initial, oops, oops. All right, there's the initial sphere. Duplicate it, put it back at zero with zero rotation. There we go. So there's the original sphere. And then grab everything else and join them together. Fine. Join them together. And there we go. All our ornaments are in one. I should name these ornaments. Hey, V8. How you doing, man? South Africa. What time is it there in, in South Africa, guy? Good, good on you for being here. Okay, we got a tree here. So, green tree. And then we're going to duplicate this tree. And we're going to call this cyan tree. And we're going to take this tree. We're going to add a custom material that swaps you over to being cyan. So, let's see how you look in material view. There's cyan. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Um, and what I'm going to do now is we're going to go back into sculpt mode, which is what I started doing. We're going to turn on Dinotopo. What? Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. I forgot I got to apply all the modifiers. Apply all. Okay, now we can Dinotopo the snot out of this thing. And we're going to add some snow to our tree. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Oh, when we finally kiss goodnight. Oh, I, I covered up that ornament. I'm going to have to move that one. Or I could just undo that and work around the ornament. There we go. There's some snow on our tree. We'll procedurally generate it. Not procedurally. Not procedurally generated. I am generating this snow by hand. But it's going to be beautiful and fun when it's done. All right. Let's... uh generate some more snow on our tree. Uh, Dan, good to have you here. And by the way, Dan, I, I, I sent you that package a little while ago. I don't know if you've received it yet, but I didn't know what name to put on the package because your Twitter profile just says Danzica, which I assume is short for Dan. And so I, uh, I just put Danzica on there. I put your, your Twitter handle on there. Which I thought was a little bit silly. Um, but let me know your real name. And uh, and I hope you get that package soon. So here's the thing. I'm making this dual color tree under the assumption that this test that I'm printing is going to work. And if it doesn't, <laughs> everything I'm doing here is a waste of time. Other than sitting here and chatting with you guys. Which, by the way, hey Dan, um, while I've got you guys on the chat and everybody here. I think I need to use, also use this time to talk a little bit about 
uh, my channel, what I'm thinking of doing, plans and stuff like that. So I'm going to, to Christmas break here for a little while. So, so uh, as some of you know, oh, you're welcome, Dan. I'm glad you got the package. As some of you know, I lost my job recently. Uh, I've, I've been kind of quiet about it because, you know, you don't, you don't want to hit people with negativity. Um, you want to be as positive as possible. And so I've, I've kind of kept that under wraps. But lately I've decided, you know what? People should know. People should know that I'm out there looking for work. And the first kind of short-term job that I got, really cool, was doing some 3D printing consulting for a company. But it only lasted a week. And there might be more work in the future with them. Uh, you, you always hope so. But I'm dis you know, I, I wonder if I could make a living doing 3D printing and that sort of thing. So I'm building it up. I'm building up my resume. But part of the problem is... While I'm strapped for cash, while I'm out of money, I can't really invest any money in this. So I'm considering, I don't know, I'm considering my options of how I can get out of this situation um, most effectively. Well, that looks like snow, kind of, sort of, I guess. Yeah, we're going to go with it. Um, anyone's printer exploded lately? Uh, my, my printer stopped working. This experiment is not working. There's supposed to be words here that you can see, and uh, and you guys can see that you cannot see any words. We'll see what happens when it gets higher. Anyway, so yeah, I'm so I'm exploring other options. I'm trying to get another job, and meanwhile, I am I am trying to raise money so that I can. Um, yeah, I wish that I could go full YouTube, but nobody except for maybe Barnacles is making money on YouTube full time. And while I would love to be Barnacles, um, my profession, I am, uh, I was, a t well, I'm 3D printing professor. I was a teacher before this, but I also know software development. I've done software development for 10 years before I was a teacher. Um... So, yeah, let me know if you if you hear anything, if you guys have any ideas. I'm considering, though, so there is, uh, do any of you know about Pod Pledge? Have you heard about Pod Pledge? Is that a thing for you? Yeah, certainly not enough subs to live off yet. Um, so Pod Pledge is, is another way to do, uh, to, to, it's, it's like um, Patreon, which, by the way, I've been getting some Patreon subscribers this week, and thank you to all of my Patreon subscribers, either who are in the chat right now or who are going to watch this video later. You guys are the wind beneath my wings. You are enabling me to do so much. And every penny that I get through Patreon is going to go towards better equipment, hopefully improving my computer so I can do more videos. Although it looks like... Uh, um, you know the the uh, the settings are going good so far, so I'm not too bad, not not feeling too bad about that. Uh, V8 freak asked, "What did I teach? I taught um, math and computers, uh, uh, and yeah, the programming, IT, uh, whatever I could, whatever they needed me to teach." Um, so yeah. WD-40 for glue removal. Uh, do like Chuck Helberg and Joe Telling. What did, what are they doing besides uh, just having really awesome content and uh, and uh, giving people exactly what they want, <laughs> which I apparently haven't figured out the trick to yet. Um, let's see. What am I doing here? Um, yeah, no, I respect, I respect and I'm slightly jealous of, uh, um, Heather, been a pleasure to have you, uh, do, yeah, I look forward to seeing you, or I, I look forward to your view later, I guess, I say seeing you, but I'm, I'm, I'm not going to see you on the view, but, yeah, so, plus it's the Christmas season right now, so there's not a whole lot of work. Uh, to go around, and I'm hoping next year that something else, uh, something better will come along. And I and I trust that it will. I trust that I, I came here for a reason, and that reason was not to be immediately uh, let go for reasons that I still am not clear about. <laughs> All right.
Okay, so what am I doing right now? I am... I'm trying to wrap some yellow around this tree. Um, and I'm going to use a couple of a couple of techniques that I know to make this work. Uh, hopefully you guys will be impressed when you see it. Um, oof. That was no good. No bueno! Uh, oh yeah, the 3D Printing 101 series. I need to talk about that too. I feel like I haven't completed any thoughts that I've been starting today, but that's all right. Um, 3D Printing 101 series is going well, and I want to tell you guys my plan for that. So the plan for the 3D Printing 101 series is um, balloon fetish and is open about it. Now, are we talking about love to do balloon animals uh, and absolutely enamored with it, or are we talking about something sexual? Because I am definitely the first, not so much the second. Uh, I actually used to do balloon animals for a living, and uh, that's kind of part of the story of my of my 3D printed, or not my 3D printed, my, my Pokemon tie, was I was doing balloon animals at the time, and I'm not even wearing a tie today. I am full on in casual mode. Uh, but, you know, weekends, Saturdays, we could do that. Um... So yeah, I used to love doing balloon animals, and I do them at parties and stuff like that. I worked my way through college with balloon animals. Pretty cool stuff. Why is this thing going way out to BFE for me? Come on, bring it in. All right, there we go. Hey, virus boy. Welcome to the chat. All right. I think I'm almost done with this ribbon. Oops, extrude it out this way. All right. Delete those vertices. Now let's try that again. There we go. I'm just gonna scale it down to nothing here. And all right, so check it out. I've, I've created this ribbon that just wraps around like this. Now check out what I'm gonna do, a couple of modifiers. First of all, I'm going to do a subdivision surface on it, which is going to give it, first of all, it's gonna make it smoother, but it's also going to give it a lot more vertices. And then I'm gonna tell it to, um, I can never remember it, cast those vertices. No, not cast, cast is the wrong one. Uh, it is sorry I hate I, I have to read them in my head I I know these when I'm like doing it by myself but sometimes I'm here and I'm stuck skin is this it no it's not skin it's not solidified it's not subdivision I just did subdivision <laughs> more simple shrink wrap shrink wrap that's it shrink wrap it to the cyan tree so now it is, as much as possible, stuck to the cyan tree. And it does some weird stuff in, at times, which you can sometimes correct by increasing the, uh, the vertices and sometimes correct by correcting the geometry. Let's see what's happening here. It is not cooperating. All right, chat's going crazy. Let's see, just wondering, hello. Uh, engage vendors and suppliers to get review items. You know, I do need to do that. I really do. I think Joel does a fantastic job of that, and I think that's why he does so well, because he's he doesn't mind going out and talking to people, and I am frightfully antisocial. Um, I just, I just am scared of people. Uh, and I know I don't seem like it, but I am. It's true. Ooh, boy, that is that is not loving it. That is not loving it. All right, let's let's keep going with this and see what happens. Let's add our solidify modifier to this. Solidify has a lot of really cool properties to it, but one of which it will turn a flat surface into a round surface. Um, all right, 
let's look at this in material mode. I think that that ribbon was a mistake. Big mistake. <laughs> uh, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna get rid of the ribbon. I think the ribbon was a mistake. <laughs> let's not. Let's. Let's not do the ribbon around it. That's just not gonna work. I think what we're. I think what we got is what we got. I think we're gonna go with it. Um. So, assuming that this print works. Um, assuming that that print works, I will go ahead and print this tree, and we will see how it works. It's 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 an experiment, and we'll see how it works. Um, oh, uh, I gotta say, the uh, the um, rigid ink guys have been doing fantastically, sending me some ink or ink. I, I hate that they call this ink, but they have sent me every flavor of filament that they have, and I absolutely love it. And so I've got some reviews. I'm playing with their flexible filament. I had to change my build plate so that I could play with it. Um, and now I need to do some more playing with it. Um, and so, yeah, I've, I've absolutely loved working with them. I apologize. I, I need to do better on my live streams of being a little bit more. Uh, so have I ever used Autodesk Fusion 360 for about a grand total of 15 minutes? Um, and I'm going to do some tutorials on it because I love, I love seeing what other people are doing with it. It absolutely is fantastic. Um, the scripture tree. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dan, for asking about the scripture tree. So here is, <laughs> here's what I got on the scripture tree. I do not have time to finish the scripture tree for this year. And I realized I did the way that I'm, I'm connecting these all wrong. The big ball and socket thing was a mistake. It should have been a ball, a small ball and socket, but it shouldn't have even been that I could really easily just angle this out and just put a loop on here, which I hate realizing something like that this late in the game. So if you have not already got this as a as a 3D print scholar, oops, see that's why it's it's awful. It it shouldn't work. Uh, if you haven't already got the tree or the model for the th tree, be sure to support me on Patreon. Download those models and and call it good. Um, I'm really excited though. Uh, I, I, I just need to go back and redo it, but I don't have time before Christmas to redo it. So I think that this experiment is, or this, this project is going to have to be uh, written off for this year. I did get two of the ornaments done. Um, I don't, here's the, here's the yoke one that has a reference to uh, Matthew 1129 on it. And then there's the baby, and the baby turned out really good. I lost my baby. Where'd my baby go? Oh, there it is. Found it. Yeah. There we go. Uh, there's my sleeping baby. It's adorable, and it worked really good, and it's got reference to Isaiah uh, 9-6 on there. So I'm going to definitely finish this scripture tree, but it takes a lot more time. These little ornaments take a lot of time to do. And although I am encouraged by how well this live stream worked with Blender. We're not we're not dropping any, dropping any frames or anything, are we, guys? We're doing good? So I think that this scripture tree will definitely make a comeback. Another project that I wish that I had time to do this holiday season was uh, the 3D block zoo really inspired me, and I love doing it. And I wanted to do a whole 3D block nativity, uh, which included 3D block people. Um, yeah, well, okay, so I, I didn't have... There's only a couple days till Christmas, man. There's no way I'm going to be able to get it, <laughs> to get it done in time. Um, and plus I got to look for work. I mean, my family doesn't need to get paid. So unless, unless I run like a super successful Patreon or GoFundMe campaign and end up getting a lot of, um, I'm sorry, V8 about your Christmas. My Christmas is also going to suck a little bit, but well, you know, we'll get by, stay positive, uh, uh, keep on keeping on and something will happen. It always does. Um, I'm glad you guys like the scripture tree. I'm definitely going to finish it. The models were put out there, and I need to put out there uh, today on on the uh, Patreon page that this is about as far as it's going to get uh, this year because I need to redesign the hooks. I need to reprint it, um, and my my select mini that I made this for is kind of down right now. But I will definitely I will definitely finish working on the scripture tree. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't, I, I, you know, I should write a script for these things, but 
I think I'm done with this. This is this is looking pretty good. Uh, no, it's looking pretty uh, pretty awful. But I I sub I think that if this experiment works, and let's just say I'm not sold. I don't know. I don't think my yellow is yellow enough, and I think it's catching too much. I don't think my nozzles are calibrated enough. I've I've got to you know I got to reach out to August and and find out how he did what he did. Oh man, I'm getting some weird curling. Where the two, where the two uh, colors are are melding on each other, I'm getting squirting out the side, and it's looking. I don't know if you can see this, but it's looking really awful. Let's see if I can get this in here. There we go. How's that looking? Sorry if I'm making anybody seasick. But it's looking awful. <laughs> this is just not succeeding. I think I'm going to let it go. It's at about 53%. I'll post a picture of it uh, on this. But, man, I don't know how he did it. Uh, also, a future video. I do a lot with lithophanes. You guys saw my lithophane uh, maker coin earlier. Well, I did curved lithophanes. Okay? Which I didn't think would work. And the reason why I didn't think that they would work... Um, yeah, PLA does not stick to capped on tape. Uh, PIE is definitely the best. Build tech comes in a close second for me. So, uh, um, I did a curved lithophane. And I didn't think it would work. Because the first lithophane I did, I printed standing up. And it turned out awfully. Um, the second lithophane... It, it, I did. I laid down, and it turned out great. And so I decided all lithophanes must be uh, must be laid down. Yeah, I could get through things easier on a stream if I wrote a script, and I didn't. <laughs> I didn't write a script for this. Um, but then I, when I laid it down, I realized, oh, you need to do only single layers with your hundred percent infill to make it, or single shells. And so I started doing that for all my lithophanes. And then just for fun, I tried standing them up again, and and they work. Let me pull out my little lamp and show you guys. Um, let me check on the camera. Here we go. It worked great standing up. And I think it's because I'm doing the single shells this time. There are still some parts where it gets so thin that it doesn't do infill in the middle. But for some reason, it's not affecting the overall quality. So a curved lithophane works. So I may be doing a video in the future about a curved lithophane. But I have to get through this 3D Printing 101 series because there are a lot of people right now going to be getting 3D printers for Christmas who need the slicer video that, that I've recorded and I need to edit. So I'm going to edit that. Uh, I'm going to edit those up. I do not have a pancake bot. I've seen the pancake bot, and I am not impressed. In my mind, it doesn't make pancake fast enough for for uh, any practical use. Um, I don't know if build tax easy to damage. I have I have abused the snot out of this stuff, and it's still going strong. But it's cheaper to replace the PIE, and nobody's making a PIE with a with a glue backing on it uh, that I've been able to see. So that's that's responding to chat. Anyways, I think that this is done. I think the experiment is going to keep running. And when it's done, uh, be sure to check my blog for ideas about what's going on uh, with the with this and, and, and the report on this, as well as uh, check my Patreon and get the, the files for this tree so that you can uh, print one for yourself. But I think that I'm going to have to redesign it a little bit. The design is going to have to iterate. And so maybe this will be a design for next year, and maybe I'll do this. I don't know if the 3D block zoo will be a thing, but I do want to do a nativity of some sort 3D printed. I feel like that needs to be. Um, who else printers prints inside holes like 0 0.6 uh, millimeters smaller? So if your 3D printers inside holes, I you know I have a video about accuracy of 3D prints coming up. If your printers inside holes are smaller than 0 0.6, then you've re you've calibrated your printer incorrectly um and we'll talk I'll, I'll talk about that in a future video accuracy of 3d prints is definitely going to be a part of not the 101 series of the 102 series of videos that i'm doing um yeah so hey guys thank you very much for stopping by thank you very much for stopping by in the chat i would love to sit and talk some more but this is about all the time that i've got for today for this you guys are fantastic you're the wind beneath my wings thank you for everything that you do and We'll catch you next time. As always, safety first, and I'll see you next time.